Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to ME, my hook and I, not these eyes, but all right. Lighting is still an issue, but welcome back. I am so glad to have you. My name is Betsy and ME stands for myalgic encephalomyelitis, which is the new term for chronic fatigue syndrome. Don't worry. I won't quiz you on it. You don't have to figure out how to say that. Um, but this is my channel about crochet and chronic illness. I do quite a bit of advocacy work, but crochet is more fun. So I have a huge video today. Um, I had to actually like make show notes, which makes me feel super like legit. Uh, <laughs> I also want to say welcome to my new subscribers. I am a fairly new channel. I have only been around since this summer and lots of new people seem to be finding me every day. So I kind of consider you all a little bit new and I am so happy that you are here in your, wherever you're at, enjoying some stuff. I feel like it's been a hard week and I don't think that that's unique to me. I feel like it's been kind of a slow, week on uh the in the crochet youtube world this week um so i feel like maybe it's just a thing that we're all just i mean this world like there's a lot going on so i hope that you have found me because you are able to take some time for yourself and you are maybe enjoying some crochet while you listen to this video and we're all gonna take some time to zen out and enjoy crochet together. Shall we? Sounds good to me. <laughs> so, um, I actually, my health has still kind of been like good days, bad days. I keep swinging wide, as they say, on the days that I feel good instead of trying to pace my energy. So, you know, what else is new? When you feel good, you wanna do good. Um, so I'm actually like, I'm further a lot further behind on some of my personal goals. Um, like I wanted to have my Etsy shop open by now, <laughs> but it's not there. Um, so I made the announcement last week of, would you be interested in if I had, um, an Etsy shop and I'm going to enter some pictures here of some of the stitch markers that I have made. You guys seem to be favorable though. I know there are stitch marker channels everywhere, but my ice yarn haul video is doing really well. And in order for me to be able to do that again, <laughs> I am disabled and I can't work and I'm waiting on my disability claim to go through. So I'm trying to open an Etsy shop to fund my yarn habit. Aren't we all, right? Um, so I hope you enjoyed looking at those stitch markers. I'm also hopefully going to have some of these cinch top bags. This one not because obviously it's full and in use but I have more of this fabric so maybe this one will make an appearance and they cinch like this. Um, there will probably be fewer of these than I have stitch markers just because this takes a lot of energy for those of you who are new to my channel. Um, the big deal about myalgic encephalomyelitis or chronic fatigue syndrome is something called post-exertional malaise mm, and that means when I do stuff my cells actually don't make enough energy for me to recover from it so imagine if you ran a marathon you know even if you trained for it you'd probably be sore for a few days afterwards for me any mental physical or emotional <laughs> exertion is kind of like running a marathon or kind of like a phone whose battery never fully charges. So I'm a little slower at getting these out. I probably will not do custom orders because again, my timeline is slow. So I will be posting things hopefully that are just done that I can just send out to you slash get someone in my personal inner circle <laughs> to put in a mailer and get to you at a reasonable rate. Um, so that's the update for, you know, maybe my Etsy shop will go live next week. Maybe it won't make it. I don't know. <laughs> the best way to keep up on that is to follow me on Instagram at me.myhook.and.i. And that 
hopefully I'll remember to put that in the description. But last time I said I'd put a lot of things in the description, I forgot. Brain fog, also part of an illness. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is, I think I have shared on a previous video how much I love Furl's Odyssey crochet hooks. Yes, they are expensive as all get out, but another part of my illness is chronic pain. So I'm always looking for ways to reduce that for me. And for me, honestly, I can go faster, <laughs> faster, longer. <laughs> I'm gonna make a pastor's wife blush. I can crochet a lot longer with <laughs> the Furls crochet hooks, and they are so decadent expensive, even though I generally wait until there's a 20% off sale. They're so decadent expensive that I was storing them in the box they came, came in, which is what they recommend doing if you don't have a case. And I finally said, you know what? I have now have enough of these that I need to invest in a case. And so I'm going to link my new case, hopefully, in the description it will be an amazon affiliate link which means i might get like a little bit but this is only 13 dollars, and i am in love with it so far i think it comes in a couple different colors but purple was the prettiest i thought unless you wanted to go with something neutral it has two compartments and within those compartments are other pockets so i'm gonna open it up and show it to you i thought i would review this for you so you could see, because they, you know, if you went in Amazon and you searched crochet hook case, it would come up, but it wasn't like it showed a picture of the furls hooks in there or anything. So this is the inside of the first compartment. So you can see that fits quite nicely and you could actually flip these under here if you wanted to protect them more, which I would probably do if I were traveling, but let's be honest, who's traveling right now? Not very many of us. Um, and then this is the furls. <laughs> There's a name for it, Stream Streamline? I don't know, it's their wooden hook. Um, and so it actually has a little bit longer of a shaft than the Odyssey ones, but it does well in, so if you hold, the, hold them exactly level, the Streamline is a little taller, but as you saw, it fits quite nicely, so it will do well for their streamline hooks and their furl hooks. Odyssey, sorry. And then over here, I have two zipper pouches. I've got my scissors and my yarn needles. And then I have my plastic stitch markers. I'm gonna figure out a way to do my other stitch markers that I've made in there. That tape that came in a yarn yay box the other day to help you keep track of your pattern and I have some um what is that called you know what that's called you're yelling it at me right now it's long it measures the tape measure <laughs> that's what that is um so I have a tape measure in there and so that's this very first compartment if I can figure out and slash have the brain power when I edit this video I will try to put timestamps in the comments um, anyway, this is the other side. So it, the other side, whoops, I guess you forgot to zip it up. The other side is, um, more loops and a bigger zipper pouch. So these are Clover Amore hooks if you're, and these are just your standard metal hooks. And then because when I do amigurumi, I have to use the really long needles sometimes for shaping. So I put those in there. Um, and then, because some of you I know have these hooks, the lighted one may actually fit, but I actually, I, I can't use the lighted one. I am entirely too light sensitive, which you wouldn't know by how lit up my bedroom is, but I'm actually more light sensitive when it comes from one single source. So I can't actually use this. I thought it would be helpful when I had black yarn, but anyway, it, no, it is actually, it would have to go in the front. So it is actually too tall. And so are these, oops, I just dropped that one. These are from Hobby Lobby and they were too tall. So I just stuck them 
in this larger zipper pouch, which is pleated. So like you could put more stitch markers and other things in here. Um, but you know, obviously when you're um, doing furls, hooks, you can't afford to have a hook in every project bag. <laughs> so I love that this kind of zips up and um, I can just throw it in whatever project bag. This is another thing that fell out and that is a great segue for my next topic, which is my Mr. Rogers update. You may be looking at this and some of you who are like nurses or in the healthcare industry are like, what in the world is she doing with a pair of hemostats? <laughs> so these actually, um, <laughs> believe it or not, it's another one of those metal things that's disposable in the healthcare world. I don't recommend stealing them from your local hospital, but um, you know, I get stuff like this for various health things. And I actually have had these for a long time because I first encountered these with fabric doll making. And as you know, I, or maybe you don't cause you're new, I love amigurumi. And when you are doing small amigurumi and you have to stuff those small things, I'm going to insert a clip here in what a lifesaver hemostats are for stuffing arms. So, okay, so here is Mr. Rogers' arm. It is very tiny and I have not sewn my ends in. I will do that after I stuff him, but here is the hemostat doesn't have to be a curved nosed one. It's just what I happen to have. Grab a little bit. That might be a little much actually. This is very tiny. Whew. Mm. All right. Working it in bit by bit. It's all the way down to the hand right now. I've opened it up and pulled it out. I'm going to try to push a little bit more into his hand. There's the thumb. There we go. So now there's enough in his hand to have a little body. And there's not really anything left right now in his arm. Let me grab just a little bit more. And she did say not to stuff it too much or his arms would stick out at his sides, so working that through. I've got a little bit of a got a little bit of a bump here. So again, I don't know how you do this without a hemostat. She recommended a pencil eraser, but you can really you can grab on to you can open and close this and really grab on to whatever pieces you're wanting to pull apart within there to make it less lumpy and bumpy. It still takes some fussing with, but it's definitely a lot easier than pushing and having no control with a long, with a long pencil eraser. There we go. All right, so I hope you found that was helpful. Um, you can actually get, I'm gonna see if I can get a link for these on Amazon again. If it's an Amazon link, chances are it's an affiliate link from, my, from me. But they used to sell these in the quilting notions at Joann's. I'm not sure why, because again, we used it for um, doll making. It's good for like turning tubing. That might be why, maybe because it's it's also really good at turning bias binding if you go and grab the end of a tube and you pull it through. 
Um, it's, I mean, I can't recommend hemostats enough because also they're really good for when I'm making um, jewelry and you want to hold a jump ring, but you don't have two sets of pliers, but you have a hemostat. I really recommend it. And you don't, they come different ways. You don't have to have one that's got a curved nose like that. I find it a little easier to grab the insides of things. Like I can even adjust the stitching here. I mean the stuffing by like, you know, pushing it, putting it in the hole and then I gotta fix that obviously. So I can't say enough about hemostats. <laughs> Make friends with your local nurse who's already a hero, and yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. All right, so I ha this is Mr. Rogers. Last time you saw him, he did not have arms, so I have finished his arms, and I sewed them on. I also finished his tie, and I have worked on his shoes. If you watched last time my Mr. Rogers update, I did not have any white yarn, and... I got some in my ice haul, if you watch that. And the ice haul was the particularly, the particularly white, <laughs> the particular white that I got was supposed to be for amigurumi because especially these smaller amigurumi call for a, either a DK weight or lighter. I'm trying to find the ball that was in here. It was an absolute delight to work with. Um, and I got, I think it was like eight balls in there and it stayed wound and it was, I mean, when you're doing something as teeny tiny as this, I just loved it. And next time I do an ice haul, this comes in so many different colors. It's an acrylic cotton blend. I will probably get it in every color assuming I have enough money to do an ice haul again. <laughs> um, I'm in love with it that much. And then the other thing I've done is his sweater. And I got, I'm actually kind of sad because my Joanne doesn't have this anymore. I think it might have been a tester yarn. It was called Knit Crochet. It didn't really have a name on it. It had a black label. Anyway, I used it for my very first, no, my second descent collar. And I loved this stitch definition that I got out of it. It was the teal and the red was the perfect Mr. Rogers red cardigan. So I was trying really hard to make this work, but I kept having all kinds of problems because Let's be honest, this is more of like a four hook. I was trying to use a three, nope, I think I might've been trying to use the 2.75. <laughs> and it was looking, it just, you know, not only did this crochet up way too wide for Mr. Rogers, it was a pain in the butt to work with because I was using too small of a hook, but I was trying to make it work. And then I remembered that I had an a hobby, H-O-B-B-I-I, -I, yarn haul, uh, maybe three or four weeks ago, and I ordered a cotton mystery bag, which I was hoping would have white cotton in it, and it didn't, but you know what it did have? It had the perfect weight, perfect shade of red. And so, is this not the cutest little cardigan you've ever seen? There's Mr. Rogers cardigan. And um, I have to say, like, I just, I loved the way this stitched up, but it unraveled a little more than the white stuff from ice. And um, I believe it was um, Hobby's rainbow cotton. Um, and it worked just fine. But if I can afford to do an ice order, I prefer the other one. Um, same weight cotton except for this is 100 percent cotton and the white that i was talking about is a 50 50 acrylic blend so actually the other one's a little softer so for a doll you might prefer that anyway but this is a christmas present for a friend of mine he's not exactly going to be it's not like a cuddly kind of doll it's a this guy's your idol and isn't this cute so i i was really hoping to have him done but sadly life chronic illness 
I don't meet my own timelines very often, but I'm super pleased with him thus far. And, you know, I used, I, I had a hard, I had to, here's the thing. I love Omikurumi, but I, if you watched my 73 questions, look at me plug in all my videos and you saw my yarn stash. I don't have much of a yarn stash. So I had to buy these specific colors because they're not colors I gravitate to. And um, I find it very difficult to find finer weight yarn in most big box stores in the US. So his arms are longer than they're supposed to be, which means his legs are probably longer. Cause again, I was trying really hard to use the yarn that I could find from a big box store. And if I did it again, I think I would just, and I feel like I'm, I have to make one for myself. This is going to a friend. Um, I think I would, again, I would just order all the colors that that cotton acrylic blend came in and I just, you know, love it. So we'll see when I get another update. I'm really intimidated about doing his face and his hair. <laughs> so uh, when I'm intimidated about something, I choose other things to work on. <laughs> Which is why, even though I had a kind of up and down week, I was able to finish the Bag o Day crochet sweater in my coconut cream latte cake. And I realized that you can't really see it well there, so I'm gonna insert a picture. This is for my mom. I had to make some adjustments for it too. My mother is a very petite woman. This is her Christmas present. Um, and I found that I crochet, double crochet, a lot shorter than Crystal at Bag Day Crochet does. I could tell that by looking at her sample picture. So I had to add, well, first off, let me tell you, um, I used a smaller hook because I wanted this to be thick and soft. So I used a size five hook, even though technically, I think, one, I think a latte cake usually calls for a six. Let's see, six and a half. No, wait, yep, six and a half. So I used a five. So I had to add quite a bit of length to it. I added five rows to the whole thing around. She, so to add the length to it, I added five rows to this and the front panels and the sleeves. Um, and because this is petite and it got skinny in the sleeves, my new, my mom is tiny, so this is still going to be fine. I did not decrease on the cuff the way she recommended. And she had five rows of ribbing and I just thought that would look ginormous on my mom. So I only did four. And I should have done a warning. I don't think she watches my videos because she has a lot of things to do. <laughs> But mom, hope you're not watching. But if you are, hope you like it because you're getting it for Christmas. <laughs> so I actually have a 100% handmade Christmas goal for, for myself, for everybody in my family, except for, well, and my friends, except for my daughter who really only gets toys from us at Christmas and her birthday. <laughs> I would be sorely disappointed if I told her it was nothing but crochet toys this, this Christmas. So everybody else is, I'm, it's my goal to do 100% handmade Christmas. If you have that goal or close to it, let me know in the comments because I would love to cheer each other on. Um, so Mr. Rogers is a Christmas present. This is a Christmas present. And I have one more Christmas present that I have talked about, but I did not show because it was blocking. It was on the blocking block last time I talked about it, which was this sparkly, descent collar. So my friend Marianne is getting this. I made it out of Hobby Lobby. I love this yarn um, in black metallic and ivory with gold metallic in it, which is a worsted weight yarn and the pattern calls for DK. So this is quite a bit thicker and heavier, but I'm loving the look of it. I'm gonna hold it up next to my DK weight one so you can see sort of the difference in size. 
I used a five hook. Um, so yeah, it's a couple inches bigger. And obviously compared to the bib on this, it's not near as drapey and it's a lot fuller. However, I kind of like that it's holding its shape a little better. And she lives in Pennsylvania, so she is not going to dislike the extra warmth of a bulkier yarn. So, I finished this actually, I think like two weeks ago. I just haven't shown it yet. Um, so, those are my finished objects. Let me check my, my notes. Because we're already at 23 minutes. What? Um, so I did my finish. Okay. Um, happy mail. I didn't have any this week, which is fine because I know I have some coming. Um, I will write you back if you send me a card. So if you like to have pen pals, I'm totally down for that. You don't have to send me presents or anything. A card or a postcard from where you're from or anything like that would totally make my day. Um, however, I am accepting donations. Um, if you've made it this far in the video, I probably should have said this at the beginning of the video. I forgot to put all the requirements in the description of the last. So again, hopefully I will remember to do timestamps, Amazon links, and the donations, things that we're asking for, which is mainly just winter items, hats, scarves, gloves. It's going to a ministry called Must Ministry that is here local to the north east of Atlanta and they serve the chronic homeless and um, poverty stricken to help get them back on their feet and give them resources like warm clothes. They also accept blankets including baby size blankets because a lot of times they have a lot of young families so if you have some spare blankets that you have been working on they will accept that and cherish those and love those. Um, you can send those hopefully I'll remember to put my P.O. box <laughs> Also in the description, I should write this list down of, you know, I'm, you're going to put this in the description, Betsy. Um, and if you send in anything to donate, um, just one entry per person. So it's not based on the number of items you can send. Because part of the reason I'm doing this is because it's hard for me to make a quantity enough of things to feel like I can commit to donating to something. Um, but hopefully vicariously through you, I can donate a bunch of different things, um, and feel like I have a larger impact on the community here at large and we can do that together. And I will have a giveaway of some stitch markers and some yarn from my ice haul and who knows what else. And so far I have zero donations. So your chances of winning are pretty big at the 9th of October, which I'm not discouraged. I'm a small channel. This is the first time I've done this. I didn't know what to expect. Um, Rose from Rose Likes Crochet inspired me to do this. When I asked her how she got started, she said, just do it. And I said, okay, <laughs> we'll just do it and we'll see how it turns out. And if I get some stuff, great. If I don't, you know, we'll just keep keep going maybe hopefully so um that will be done at the end of October a giveaway for those who have donated um what else oh oh I forgot okay so if you follow me on Instagram and again that is another thing I'm supposed to put in the comments at me dot at me dot my hook dot and I Sorry for the dots. I just thought it was going to be easy to see that way, but I'm realizing that's hard to promote. Anyway, that's my Instagram handle. I did a poll in my stories today. It is October 9th. You will see this on October 10th. Z over at Zelda. I don't remember. I'm going to link her channel in the comments because it's a username. <laughs> um, is having, you probably heard of it by now, if you're on the interwebs of YouTube for crochet, the just feel a festive shawl crochet along and it started September 23rd I had been hearing Z's name I had been seeing this hashtag all over and thank goodness for all the random channels out there who promote each other I finally found a link to her channel 
and it ends on October 15th, but I am going to try to get it done before then. Um, now that I've finished this sweater, I figure a shawl will make somebody in my family a good Christmas gift. And I did a poll on my Instagram channel about which yarn I should use. And the choices were the Picasso Ice Yarns, which I think this was maybe one of my favorites that I got, or the Clara from Ice Yarns. Now, it was overwhelmingly <laughs> the Picasso yarn, which let's be honest, this is beautiful. I mean, it's just got the prettiest colors and the prettiest sheen. But I do actually really like the colors in this. And if they could feel it, they may change their mind. I'm just saying. I mean, well, this is really soft too. They're both super soft. Um, but this is probably more of a niche <laughs> than this. So hopefully after I get done filming this, I can go start on this. I'm thinking it's rainy here in Atlanta. Not from the hurricane yet, which we pray for everybody who is in the path of that. And I hope that you are safe um, if you are in the path of Hurricane Delta. But we do have a lot of rain here and it would be a great evening for a movie and some progress on the cow. So, Picasso it is. So please give me a follow on Instagram if you see this and I remember to make it easy and link it in the comments for you. And maybe you can help me choose my yarn for some other projects. And also whenever I open my Etsy shop, I will probably update on Instagram that link that I've done it live before I will have a chance to post a video. So if you want first dibs, follow me on Instagram. But I'll give you a hint Spoiler alert, the name of the shop will be <laughs> Emmy, My Hook and I. So you could probably search that and see if it's there yet. Um, if you're finding this, if you don't follow me on Instagram. But the easiest thing to do would be follow me on Instagram. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I hope you made a lot of progress on whatever it is you're working on while you're watching this or that you're enjoying a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and that you've had some time to just sort of zen out because clearly I'm such a zen personality. <laughs> anyway, I hope you were able to take some time for yourself because it is just a rough world out there. So I'm glad you took some time to spend with me in my corner. And if you have not yet hit that like button, it will help me know that you like my content. It'll help YouTube know that you like my content. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I would be extremely grateful. And I can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.